Hello everyone, it's great to see you here once again on Dee's Delights. It is a beautiful, sunshiny day out today. Uh, it's probably in the 50s out there. What is today's date? Today is March 17th. Spring is just around the corner. I'm so looking forward to it. But today, I have to stay indoors to cook. I can't cook outside until we get the grill out. So right now, I am going to show you, it says a cheesy turkey meatloaf. I have made before for you the four ingredient meatloaf, which is fantastic. I have had so many people comment on that, how they love it, how they've made it, and they make it again and again and again. Well, today I thought I'd try a little bit different and do it with turkey. See how that turns out. You can still make the ketchup and brown sugar glaze that I put on top of it, or maybe make some gravy, or some people put bacon on top. Whatever you want to do. Today I will make the brown sugar and the ketchup mixture for the top of mine. But let's get started. For this recipe you're going to need, now I'm cutting the recipe in half because it's just Doug and I, we don't need that much meatloaf. So what you would normally do if you're going to make the full recipe and you have a family, you would want to do two pounds of ground turkey, one cup milk, one cup Italian seasoned breadcrumbs, two eggs, one teaspoon salt, one quarter teaspoon pepper, three quarter pound Colby cheese cut into half inch cubes, and then you can make your optional topping for on top. So let's get started. I'm excited. Today I'm wearing pink. I feel pretty in pink. You guys remember the movie Pretty in Pink? Was there a movie called Pretty in Pink? Alexa, who played in the movie Pretty in Pink? Pretty in Pink's actors are James Spader, Christy Swanson, Molly Ringwald, John Hughes, and Annie Potts. Okay, I remember Molly Ringwald and James Spader. That was many years ago. For some of you youngsters out there, you would not remember that movie. What year was it from, you ask? Alexa, what year was the movie Pretty in Pink from? I'm going to say in the 80s. The movie Pretty in Pink was released in 1986. 1986, I'm good. I'm good. All right, let's get started here. I am using Colby Jack cheese because I couldn't find just plain old Colby. Probably it was there and I was just too lazy to look. But sometimes when I'm in the grocery store, I want to get in, I want to get out. So I'm just going to measure out about a half a pound. Okay, so I'm going to cut them up into little teeny cubes. Uh, preheat your oven to 400 degrees. You're going to need a loaf pan. So let's get these cut up just so I have all my ingredients ready. I already have a pound of turkey. It was 16 ounce pound, already measured everything for me, so I don't even have to guess. I don't have to rip it apart. So ground turkey, and this is 85% lean and 15% fat. Uh, so it's not going to have as much fat as the usual hamburger that I buy. I usually buy 80-20, or like I've told you before, if there's a good deal, I'll even go down to like 73-27. I don't know about y'all. To me, fat is what gives it flavor. You gotta have some fat. Okay, we're gonna try it with six ounces, like it calls for, since I cut it in half. That gives me, or Doug, a little treat of cheese cubes. Cheese cubes are good for you. I mean, not in an overabundance, but it is low carb. I got my monster size purple bowl here. Anti-skid, which is always good with me in the kitchen. It says, in a bowl, mix the turkey. So we got our one pound of brown turkey. Woo! That's a lot different texture than hamburger. Kind of stickier. Wow. Okay. Interesting. As you can tell, I've never made a turkey meatloaf before, so this is going to be new and exciting for me. We're going to add the milk, which is one half cup because I've cut everything in half. One half cup of milk, one half cup of Italian seasoned breadcrumbs, and I am just using Progresso breadcrumbs, Italian style. We're going to need one egg, 
I was tempted to scramble it before or beat it up before I put it in there, but you see how I'm living life on the edge. I didn't do it. It didn't do it today. Uh, one half teaspoon salt. One eighth teaspoon of pepper. And we're going to use six ounces of chunked cheese here in a moment. First, I'm going to mix everything else by hand. Then I'm going to fold in the cheese. And we're going to transfer it to a loaf pan, but I'm going to grease that up. Maybe with turkey it doesn't need greased up. Who knows? Here comes my hubby. Here he comes, Mr. Miller. Yes, I'm recording Douglas. We are going to be having a feast tonight of cheesy turkey meatloaf and air fryer mashed potatoes. <laughs> oh, what meatloaf! <laughs> He loves meatloaf. He actually does. So, cheesy turkey. It's different tonight. We're going to mix it up. Doug's laying on the floor. He's crawling. Douglas? <laughs> there he is. Yeah. Meatloaf. How soon? Uh, Douglas, it is, what time is it? It's 3.43 in the afternoon. It, I'm hungry. <laughs> remember, I told you to have a snack. Let me see how long I have to bake this for. I bake for one hour. <laughs> now, it says one hour, but I'm cutting this in half. So I'm going to do this for about 45 minutes. You don't even have it prepped yet. Oh, it won't take long at all. Remember, I said dinner will be ready about 4.30, Mr. Miller, 4.30. Go find something to do. Get out of my kitchen. <laughs> Gonna mix this together with my spurtle. When I did meatloaf with beef, you know, ground beef, it's not as uh, liquidy as this. I'll check the internal temperature to know for sure how long to let it in, but she says you have to reach a temperature of 180 degrees. Okay, so. Let's put in our six ounces of cubed cheese. Let's just roll it on in to our loaf pan. If you're squeamish about touching stuff with your hands that are slimy, you may not want to do this. So I'll start checking this at about 45 minutes. And the glaze I put on, I'll put that on at about 25 minutes or about 20 minutes before it's done. I'm just going to mix in some ketchup and brown sugar and when this is about done I'll pour it on top and let it bake a little bit longer. Alrighty. Woo! That is sticky. Okay, it's going in the oven folks. Let's we'll see what happens in 45 minutes. Okay, let's get ready for our air fryer mashed potatoes because those are going to take some time too. We're going to need two pounds of baking potatoes. It says small to medium, so don't get those monster-sized potatoes. Two tablespoons of butter, one quarter cup cream cheese, two stalks of fresh chives. I don't have any chives, so but you may want that. Salt and pepper to taste. So, you know, right there it tells you we're not going to need much. going to be real easy to make. Okay, right there. This little pile, this lovely pile of potatoes is equivalent to two pounds. That's what we're going to use. One, two, three, four, five, six potatoes, small in size, small to medium. Okay, start by placing your potatoes into a foil packet. Lay your foil, then place the potatoes in them. Well, first we're going to wash our potatoes. I don't know about you, but I like my potatoes washed. They don't even have directions for that. I guess they assume we all know that. So, Doug, would you like these few cheese chunks? <laughs> I know you're starving. Here you go. Did you just drop one of your tasty little cheese chunks on our dirty kitchen floor? Start by placing your potatoes into a foil packet. Lay your foil, then place the potatoes in them. Going to get ready, put them in our air fryer. I'm just going to make my little foil pouch right here. Put my potatoes in them. See how this goes. All six of them. All right. I'm 
just going to cover them up. See? 400 degrees. Check after 25 minutes to see if they are fork tender. Of course, it's going to take a while. Always remember to pull your air fryer out from the wall. That heat will ruin anything behind there. Uh, I uh, have ceramic tile uh, and it uh, discolors it if it gets too close. I never used aluminum foil before in my air fryer, so I do have the fire extinguisher handy, just in case. Always good to have one of those in the kitchen. You never know when you may have a grease fire uh, or, you know, when you just sometimes aren't paying attention, which is very easy for me to do. So have one of those handy. You can count it as Tanya's tip. We'll start having Tanya's tips on the episode. So there's tip number one. I'm going to go ahead and mix up my brown sugar and ketchup for on top of my meatloaf. Tanya's tip number two. Once you open your brown sugar, keep it in the bag, but also put it in a Ziploc baggie because it goes stale pretty fast if you don't. Tip number three, always shake ketchup before you use it because there's always that watery stuff that comes out and that's gross. Now it takes a while for the uh, brown sugar to absorb into the ketchup. So you'll want to watch it for a little bit before you put too much in and then it gets too runny. And this is light brown sugar, but I have to get rid of it. I prefer dark brown for this. I can tell the texture of it, the look of it, everything is different. Might be all in my imagination. But as this sits, it'll get a little bit runnier. So I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna wait and check on my meatloaf here shortly, and I'll be back. I'm gonna put this on top just in case it doesn't have enough calories. <laughs> you know that cheese is getting crispy around the edges. I love crispy cheese. I'm going to put this back in the oven now. And then I'll check it in about 20 minutes. And we'll see if it's up to 180 degrees. If not, we'll pop it back in the oven like she says. Just about time for the fork test. Um, our meatloaf, if it's going to be cooked in 45 minutes, keep our fingers crossed. Uh, the potatoes, I'm going to mash them, but I do not have a potato masher. Usually, I use my mixer. But this says to use a potato masher or a fork. So, I looked online as a substitute. Another good thing to mash it would be the bottom of a mug. So I'm going to try that today, and then when I mix in the cheese and the butter, I'll switch over to a fork. But I'm going to use this to mash it to get the potatoes mashed down. You see how that goes. Tanya's tip number, how many tips have I given you today? Is this number three? Tanya's tip number three. Use a coffee mug, a tea mug, whatever you want to say, to use as a potato masher. Let's see, 48 seconds, and then we can do the fork test. All right, I have my steamed broccoli in the microwave. Um, the potatoes have been in for about 34 minutes. So in another minute, I'm going to check it again. Uh, the meatloaf should be done in about five minutes. I checked it with the thermometer. It's getting up around 160. Actually, a safe temperature would be 165. She has 180, but you could eat it at 165, so we'll see. This thermometer has come in so handy. And I've shown it to you before. Therm Pro. Very inexpensive on Amazon. You can use it for candies, meats, whatever you want, and then you just stick it on the fridge. Magnets. Whoever came up with that is brilliant because I use it quite a bit. So much more convenient than the old time thermometers you used to have to stick in. Okay, I'm going to check my potatoes. I'm going to put them in for another four minutes. I like mine soft. Now they are getting much softer, but we crammed a lot into that little air fryer. So it's going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to let mine in for about 40 minutes. I'm going to mark that down so I can write it on my recipe. Uh, and whatever they are in 40 minutes is what I'm going to eat. So, 
Get your steps in while you're waiting for your food to be done. Here are some wonderful arm exercises, easy that anyone can do to get rid of the flab. Maybe about a minute, uh, maybe about 30 seconds this way, then flip it around, 30 seconds that way, while you're moving your feet back and forth. It's amazing how many calories you can burn just by moving. So there's no excuse to be still. You can stand. Whoops, my towel fell on the floor. You can stand and you're not in pain. You can do simple little exercises. Because at my age, it's hard to keep the weight off, especially when I want to eat so much. And I'm cooking in the kitchen all the time. All right, come on. There goes my veggies, my meatloaf. Woo! Everything's getting done about the same time. There's little globs of cheese on top. Let's test this. Well, it made it up to about 180. So it's good. We're good. Meatloaf is done. So if you cut it in half, it only takes about 45 minutes. And like I said, this is plenty for Doug and I. Just makes a nice size meatloaf. No matter how soft these potatoes are in 40 minutes, they're getting mashed. Get mashed with a big old coffee mug. Okay, I'm gonna put them in here. So first, I'm gonna mash them with my coffee mug. Just grab it on top, push it down. It's hot. <laughs> Those potatoes are hot. So once I get them mashed pretty good, I'm going to add my cream cheese butter, a little salt and pepper, and then I'll use a fork to stir them around. I guess I could use my mixer at this point. Let's go ahead. I'm going to cut this up, break it up a little bit. Our two tablespoons of butter, our two ounces, which is also a quarter of a cup of cream cheese. I'm going to put a little salt and pepper. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. A little salt and pepper on here. You know what? Just sprinkling that pepper on my potatoes right there. Do you ever just have a flashback? My grandma away. I can just remember her putting pepper on potatoes. I haven't seen her in probably close 20 years. I miss her dearly, but all of a sudden that memory just came back. I can still see her face. Okay, so let's get it mixed up. You could put more butter on it. Now the one potato there, that was a little too firm. Most of them got soft. And I could use my mixer. I think I'm gonna use my mixer. I wanna get them to a little bit nicer consistency. And if I feel the need to add more butter, whoops. <laughs> if I feel the need to add more butter, I will. We don't have to stick straight to the recipe. Yep, mixer's gonna work better than just the fork. I'm gonna add more butter. And I'm gonna add a little bit of milk. So I put about four tablespoons of butter. You can put more or less. I'm going to need some more milk. Put it until you like the consistency. You could probably put more cream cheese in there if you want. Let's see what these taste like. There's going to be little chunks of potatoes in there. That's a rather large bite, but that's okay. They're good potatoes. They have little chunks in them. I think you'll like them. Depending on how many you put in, put them in the uh, air fryer for about 40 to 45 minutes. A little cream cheese, a little salt and pepper, butter, a little bit of milk. And you got yourself some nice mashed potatoes with chunks in it. 
Very good. I like it. Let's try the meatloaf. I think I like the end with a little bit. Let's see, of the crispy stuff. Yes, there we go. Look at that. All right. I'm going to try a little bit now of the meatloaf. Wow, that's a whole different texture. Mmm, that's good. That Kobe cheese makes a difference too. I mean, there's pockets of cheese in there. <laughs> there's pockets of cheese in there. The potatoes are good. The broccoli, which came out of a bag, <laughs> is excellent. So once again, another feast. Not in, you know, you didn't have much to do. Once you whip up the meatloaf, all you do is pretty much put your potatoes in the air fryer. You don't even need to peel them. I like it. I like it. It's all good. So thanks for joining me here once again on D's Delights and have a great week, everyone.